Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about PSP emulation on iOS with PPSSPP. Now, the free version of PPSSPP was removed from the App Store today. And interestingly, the paid version of PPSSPP, PPSSPP Gold, is still on the App Store. A lot of people were worried about this one, but it's really not that big of a deal. So here's the official statement from the developer. PPSSPP temporarily down from the App Store, back soon hopefully. Today I received a complaint from Apple that some games in the built-in homebrew store were violating copyright. I don't know or believe that any of them are, they are all free to distribute, but I took most of them down for now. I hope Apple will let PPSSPP back in the App Store soon. So there you have it. This one's pretty simple. There's nothing wrong with PPSSPP at all. It's just something in the homebrew store. The weird part about all of this is that PPSSPP Gold seems to be absolutely fine. It's the exact same emulator. I'm not joking with you. It runs the exact same. The only difference here is that the icon is gold instead of blue. The 499 just goes to support the developer. Moving on, and we're talking about multi-system emulator RetroArch, and RetroArch just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, RetroArch version 1.19.0 just dropped, and this one has a whole bunch of changes, bug fixes, and even more. There's a pretty big section dedicated to iOS and tvOS in the change log. There's some fixes and improvements in there. Now for RetroArch in general, in the menu they've added a new function in the quick menu, which is add to playlist. And for XMB, there's a brand new theme here, Flat UX. It's designed to merge flat UI and retroactive themes into one. They have significantly improved the speed of save states. They say for cores with small states, this will should. I don't know if they mean will or should. Make state saving virtually instantaneous. And for cores with large states, it should be a 32 times speed up. RetroArch is 100% free, it's open source, and if you are using it, you might want to update to the latest version. I'll drop a link in the description below. Next up, we're talking about 8BitDo, or 8BitDo, or subscribe to Mr. Sujano, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Anyways here, 8BitDo has been expanding their keyboard lineup. We can see here they've just announced the M edition of their keyboard. And on top of that, they've just announced a brand new accessory, the Retro 18 Mechanical Numpad, a 2-in-1 PC numpad and calculator. And I would argue these look pretty cool. I mean, they have an LCD for the calculator function. I've got a Bluetooth numpad. It does not have an LCD. There is no calculator with this one. And arguably, it doesn't look as cool as 8-bit does. But wait, there's even more. They've announced keyboard extensions, so you can pick up individual huge buttons in different colors. So the new M Edition keyboard is currently listed for about 94 bucks overall. The new numpad and calculator is currently listed for about 45 bucks overall. And these super buttons are listed for about 10 bucks each. These super buttons are available in yellow, green, red, and blue. And they have a very interesting standalone pad here with X, Y, A, and B on it. And that's 15 bucks. And they also have a separate joystick for also 15 bucks. Let me know your thoughts about 8-bit dose foray into keyboards in the comments below. Do you like them? Do you not like them? And are you waiting for something like an SNES version? Next up, if you're a fan of the old game and watch, specifically Chef, and you were hoping for a brand new version of it, there is an unofficial version that's just released. It's called Modern Modern Chef. If you are curious about it and wanted to see the trailer, I'll drop a link to it in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. Apparently the graphics in this one are all hand drawn. Additionally here, and I think a lot of people are gonna like this one, it's 100% free over on itch.io. I'll drop a link to this page in the description below as well. It's currently available for Windows and Mac. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation and their state of play. And today, well, PlayStation had their state of play and they revealed a whole bunch of different games and also some awesome announcements. So one of these games was Astrobot. It's a platformer and it's releasing on September 6th. 
I'll drop a link to the trailer in the description below in the event that you wanted to check it out. In my opinion, the game does look pretty good, but unfortunately, as far as I know, it's only going to be for PS5. But you know what's not going to be a PlayStation exclusive anymore? God of War Ragnarok. Today they had their PC announcement trailer, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. This was kind of a badly kept secret. I mean, there were rumors out there, and a lot of people knew this one was headed to PC. There is one bad thing about this whole thing, at least in my opinion. This is a single player game, but it's going to require a PSN account. God of War Ragnarok is already up on Steam. It's releasing on September 19th, and if I scroll down just a little bit here, it does say requires third party account PlayStation Network. So based on this information, moving forward, it appears that Sony will require PSN for games that they release on PC. I'm certain people are not going to like that requirement. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Next up, if you're a fan of Monster Hunter, you're probably going to like this trailer. Capcom and Sony have just revealed Monster Hunter Wilds, and this is the first trailer for the game. The game releases sometime in 2025. Unfortunately, I do not have a release date or a price for it. But this cinematic trailer looks pretty darn good. Now, fortunately, Monster Hunter Wilds is not going to be a PlayStation exclusive. While it is heading to the PS5, it's also heading to the Xbox Series X and S, and also to PC via Steam. Unfortunately, it's not heading to the Switch. I don't see it mentioned. Next up, we're quickly talking about the Silent Hill 2 Remake and a brand new extended gameplay showcase just popped up over on YouTube. I'll drop a link to it in the description below in the event that you wanted to check it out. The game is looking a lot better than it did before and the game will be releasing on October 8th. And speaking about looking good, next up, I've got another quick one for you. Today, Koi Tecmo announced Dynasty Warriors Origin. It's releasing sometime in 2025 for Xbox, PlayStation, and also PC via Steam. I'll drop a link to this trailer in the description below in the event that you wanted to check it out. Next up, we're talking about Evercade, and we finally know what the Evercade Alpha is. It's a bar top arcade. Well, actually two of them. There's a Street Fighter version and a Mega Man version, priced at 250 pounds, so just over 300 US dollars. And they do have Sanwa parts. Both versions have swappable marquees. The Street Fighter Edition has Street Fighter Alpha 1, 2, and 3, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and Super Puzzle Fighter 2. Whereas the Mega Man one is a little bit different. It's got Mega Man the Power Battle, Mega Man 2 the Power Fighters, Carrier Air Wing, Final Fight, Knights of the Round, and Strider. So let me know your thoughts about the Evercade Alpha in the comments below. Do these make sense? Does the pricing make sense? And which one looks better, the Street Fighter version or the Mega Man version? Next up, we're quickly talking about Newly, the custom firmware for some retro gaming handhelds. And Newly just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 2024-0530 is the latest update. For those who may be unaware, Newly is a fork of Batocera. It's 100% free and open source. And the update here adds compatibility to the RG35XX+. Plus. On top of that, it adds in compatibility for the RG35XX SP. However, since this is an initial release, they say hinge support is not there yet. And last up here, we're talking about PlayStation 4 emulation with Shad PS4. And Shad PS4 just got Sonic Mania up and running. I'll drop a link to this YouTube video in the description below and feel free to check it out. The latest version of Shad PS4 at the time of filming is version 0.0.3 and the video was showcasing version 0.0.4 which is a development version. This is a pretty big win for Shad PS4 and it's their very first working game. I'm very curious to see where things go from here. I'll drop a link to Shad PS4 in the description below and feel free to check it out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.